Are you ready for a truly special unboxing? Possibly the biggest unicorn, two unicorn plants that I have ever owned or probably will ever own. Let's unbox some plants. Hi, my name is Memo, this is my channel, House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. And today is a special day because, you know, it's a good day when I've got a box. And <laughs> the title will probably have this, this is another Equigenera order. This is now, I think, the third order. And I wasn't planning on doing another one with them for a while, but they came up with a very specific plant and the people that are kind of on average looking at their website or looking at their Instagram will know the plant that I have ordered. At least one of them, I think. Let me just double check my list. There is eight in total, because again, no self-control. I have got four anthuriums this time around and four philodendrons. One of the anthuriums I am fully expecting to be a rehab plant. And this is the anthurium that I've mentioned in one of my other videos where even Enid from NSE Tropicals struggles with. And she mentioned this in her book as well. So I thought it wasn't ridiculously expensive. And I know even the reviews on their website kind of said, mm, it's not great and they needed a lot of rehab. I am expecting this and I have specifically got that plant as a bit more of a challenge. Let me see if I can keep it happy. It could all go wrong and I'm okay with it because even if people like Enid can't kind of care for it that well, <laughs> I just want to see if I can do it. Just out of curiosity. But without further ado, Let's dive into the unboxing. I'll show you the box again. Sorry, I had to take the label off because internet and I don't need my details out there. Substantial box actually, which is disturbing because I thought that some of these might be on the smaller size. Ha! Ah, I say this for every one of their videos, but this is a unique problem to me. I think most people when they're ordering probably quite happy with larger plants, but let's have a look, shall we? I will do the uh taking off of the sellotape off screen because i think youtube has issues with knives so righty ho so all the cutting is done now let's bring it up and i do love the fact that i don't know if you might be able to see this i might have to flip the screen around you might be able to see what it says there. It says perishable. <laughs> That's an understatement. Um, but yeah, let's have a look. As per usual, this is quite good actually, because even in the summer they've put the polystyrene in. I know there's environmental issues potentially with that, but it, it gives you some peace of mind basically that things might have arrived okay. Whole bunch of paper confetti. Packing slip as always, which is good. And I can see, hmm. let's start with an anthurium first. Packaging as always with Equigenera is that kind of paper packaging with the holes and all the way through. And they do have tags for absolutely everything. It still gets me really excited when they've got the tags because it does help when kind of like unboxing and just kind of making sure that you've got all the right plants. You can see the plants properly at that point and just kind of, it's easier, I think. So this is looking good. So, not too bad, not too bad at all. So let me just refresh my mind on this one. This is a different looking anthurium. And obviously, as with any time, 
that you make the order, it is squished, but this has got more of the form that you would traditionally get with this plant. So it kind of cups, it's kind of looking a bit trilobal. The leaves are relatively turgid. The roots are good, as I've come to expect from the Equigenera orders. There's not very, very thick roots, but that's okay. And this is the Anthurium pinklii. Pinklii. I will add it at the top as I usually do, including prices and all of the above. But this is quite a cool little plant and I've tried to do some prior research before I kind of bought these plants in just so I can also share that with you. So I'll let me bring up my trusted iPad because I am not going to remember all of these by heart. Uh, my memory at the best of times is a shocking. So this is interesting. There wasn't an awful lot that I could find on this. And the reason why I got this is because it's very similar to an Anthurium arrow, I think is the common name. Uh, I'll see if I can add a picture or a video here so you can see why I got it. It's quite similar to that kind of cupping notion, which is a shame that you can't see it as clearly on some of these other leaves. But the thing that I found online on this is just like, uh, it has, it's known for vibrant pink flowers. I'm just like, is that just because it's called a pinkly eye, basically? Because I couldn't find any pictures of the pink flowers from the websites that were mentioning it as well. It does say that this is compact growing, which is good in my book, because big plant space is premium in here. So I did a bit more research on the natural habitat of each one of the plants. So this one apparently is native to Colombia and it thrives in lowland rainforests. So that gives us a bit of an indication as to what it might be used to. And it does, as most epiphytes, grow on tree trunks or on rocks for this one as well. So that's quite interesting because this is going to be going into the usual Soil Ninja horse semi-hydro mix. And as with most of these videos, the way that I will do it is I'll hopefully get some close-up videos and or images and add them or I should be adding them on the side throughout this process just so you can see what the roots look like and potentially what the plant itself looks like. Uh, I won't be asking the question on whether or not you would want me to do an update in a couple of weeks and a couple of months time. Usually the answer for most of you is yes, so I will be doing that as I do with most of my unboxings, just because I like for you to see the realities, what it means like a few weeks later and a few months later. But so far, so good. This was a good one to start off with. Yes, there's a tiny bit of cosmetic damage on there, but I'm pretty sure, yes, that is the oldest leaf. That's fine. Um, but yeah, let me put this down and continue. Shall we mix it up and go for uh, philodendron this time round? And this one is an interesting one. I like the look of it. And this is one of the big ones. <laughs> um, I like the look of this when I saw this online in terms of the, the structure and the, the overall appearance of the leaf, but I found it quite interesting because the name, I don't think it is, but I need to do some further research on this because this is the philodendron Helenia subspecies Helenia. And it could just be because it is somebody, uh, the person who is named after or anything like that might be Helen. Or if this is going off the traditional, more Latin side of things, I think Helenia also means Hellenic, which tends to be the kind of Latin, what I think might be wrong with this, I might be talking rubbish, might be the Latin name for Greece. So I thought quite appropriate with this one. Obviously it does not grow in Greece. Um, and I'd be curious if it is named after Greece as a kind of nation as to why I would imagine it's Helene, Helenia based on a Helen rather than Hellenic. But, you know, I like to make up stories in my head of some of these names, which is more for my benefit than anybody else's. But, um, Good packaging so far, nothing feels cold and nothing feels wet. So that is a uh, positive. So this is quite substantial actually. So philodendrons are always a bit of the more challenging ones when it comes from, when it comes to importing from Equigenera. 
Note how I went straight to look at the roots for a philodendron. Sorry, let me show you the plant as well, but it's got kind of lance shaped leaves and slight ruffles. And I do remember why I bought this. It wasn't just because of the name. Um, it's quite a chunky stem and it's very similar in feel to, oh, why am I not remembering this now? And I do have a label on it. Give me a sec. And this is why another reason why I like the labels from Equigenera. This is very similar chunky stem to the Pelorens, the Philodendron Pelorens. So roots are looking good. They're not super fine. And this is one that I wanted to order on my previous order alongside the replacement for the Heterocraspidum, which is here, because I thought, and I was right actually, because based on the pictures, I thought this looks very similar to the Heterocraspidum, but it felt and it looked like it might be a bit more robust online. It is. So those kind of paddly leaves, very similar in vibes a bit to the Ismerol Dens, the Sharonii, the Patriciae, the Heterocraspidum. So I thought this might be a really interesting one. It's a shame on the previous order they had just run out of stock, so that's why I couldn't get it. But this one is a really, really cool one. And so far it looks quite good. And sorry, I was mentioning before, I wanted to try also an order in the summer because it's it would have been warm everywhere whilst this is arriving. And it's come quite good. I mean, the leaves are quite thick and leathery and they feel quite kind of full, if that makes sense. As always, the sphagnum moss is almost entirely dry. But because the roots don't look like they are super, super thin, that shouldn't be a problem. And obviously it's in a plastic baggie. But let me see if I can get some more information from the research that I did on this plant. So apparently this is another one that will stay relatively compact. Looking at it now, I don't know if I believe that, but we shall see. And apparently it's self-heading. Mm. I don't think it is. This looks like a plant that would be vining. There's no substantial area roots that I can see, but this doesn't seem self-heading. So that's a fail on the research side of things. So this is native to Ecuador, so it's obviously native to where Equigenera is. And this just grows in the understory of rainforest. And based on how kind of sizable the petioles are, they look they feel very solid and as do the leaves, I would say, hedge my bets and say this is gonna be a relatively easy philodendron to care for. Because also where the petiole kind of joins up with the leaf, and I'll see if I can kind of block my face out. So you might be able to see there's a tiny bit of redness that's happening there, which is kind of cute. But yeah, this is an interesting one that maybe not that many people know of, but I thought was quite interesting. And I'm quite glad I got this now. I do really, really, really quite like this. Yes, it's that kind of paddle shaped leaves, very similar to the Jose Bueno, that kind of long leaf, but it's got more of that ruffling and I'm hoping it might drop down. I think this does grow upwards basically. Um, so less like the heterocraspidum and the uh, Esmeral dense and everything that grows downwards. This I think is more a kind of upright, but I still like this nonetheless. And it has got a new growth point on there with a new leaf coming in. That's probably going to be a bit bruised and battered, but another successful one, I think. Hopefully the video might have like clips that I have of the roots that, that I might be talking entirely rubbish and this might all be problematic, but we shall see. Right, shall we inject some drama and go for the anthurium that I was talking about? It is also one of the smaller ones. <laughs> I'm seeing green. I'm not seeing that yellow. There's at least some green that I'm seeing through the holes. So uh, let's see with this one. I, <laughs> I've not got high hopes for this as I said from the beginning of the video, but I am glad that I ordered it because at least I get to see it once in a green format, even if it doesn't survive in my care. Oh, wow. Uh, this is very thin, and I think this is quite a small one as well. Yeah, I would, you won't be able to see the form of it because this is quite juvenile, I think. 
But yeah, we've already got a loss of a leaf there. This apparently does shit particularly bad. The fact that I've only lost the one so far, I'll take as a win. Uh, let's have a look at roots. I cannot see the roots on this through the damp sphagnum moss. And when I say damp sphagnum moss, I mean entirely bone dry sphagnum moss. And this one might be the problem. Uh, there is some cosmetic damage on that leaf there. Um, which annoyingly is the newest leaf, and I think that's because it's still kind of not fully hardened off. But this might not seem like an awful lot just yet, but the leaves are quite turgid still. They've got that ruffling going on, and what I'm saying that you can't see what the mature form looks like. I'll see if I can find a picture and put it there. But this is the anterior, very juvenile form, because it's supposed to have three leaves on each petiole three blades rather than just the one. This is the Anthurium cuticuense. I think so, yeah? Cuticuense. So this is the one that Enid was saying looks a bit like chicken feet. And unfortunately, you're not getting the chicken feet vibe because there's only the one leaf. But when you get the three leaves, it is what it is. Basically looks a lot like that China chicken foot situation there. Really disturbing that the sphagnum moss is so, so dry on this, especially because this out of all of the anthuriums, as far as I can see from my research and probably why this is so difficult, this needs very specific conditions. So let me share what I have found. So first things first, they do say that it's a rare species. And I know that a lot of people struggle to keep this happy. And I think that's probably why it's rare, as in it's difficult to have in collections because it can throw hissy fits. But um, this is one that was discovered apparently on the Kutuku mountain. So that's why the Kutukuense would make sense, basically. And apparently it's very sought after. And considering that usually Equigenera sends massive plants, the fact that this is as small as it is might say that they found that it either transports better in this smaller format. I would imagine it's quite fragile and quite snappy in the larger format or they just can't grow it themselves that well. So this is what we all get. I don't know. I'm making a lot of assumptions here, but it does say obviously that it is uh, climbing, it's epiphytic, but the most important thing, and this is why I'm saying this needs humidity, this is from cloud forests. And for those that don't know what that might look like, I'll see if I can find images or videos to show you what a cloud forest looks like, but it's the forests that generally tend to be relatively high up in elevation. I think not always, maybe not always, but it's the ones that usually will have the clouds constantly around them. There's usually a lot of fog. So these plants are used to an obscene amount of humidity. Do you want to tell, do you want me to tell you the, the other really offensive thing that I'm going to do to this plant, it's just going to grow in here. Yes, I do have high humidity this time of the year. However, I need to open windows up, which means that throughout the day, it does get very hot in here, but it also gets quite dry, it drops down to 40 to 50% humidity, which for here is quite dry in this space. However, at night when the windows close and everything come up to humidity again, it does reach 80 to 90%. So I'm hoping that that might be enough to not make this throw a ginormous hissy fit. What I probably will be doing is this will be going into the Soil Ninja, I want to say, coarse semi-hydro mix. It might go into the fine semi-hydro mix because I can't see roots, but because it's so small, I think the roots might be quite small on this plant. I can see roots anywhere. Hopefully when I unbox this bit, um, I'll have some clips that I can put there. But yeah, this, watch this space. But I got to see one. It's a shame that I didn't get to see one that's a bit more mature because I might, it might not survive. <laughs> All right, let's go for another philodendron. And this is another chunky one. So, where I'm going to put all of these, your guess is as good as mine because I was hoping for slightly smaller plants. Again, as I said, it's <laughs> probably just a mean problem, probably not an everyone problem. 
but uh, I would imagine everybody would have been quite happy, especially with some of the prices for some of these plants, to get slightly larger specimens. Oh, this is pretty. Right. I will not do that to you if I can throughout this video of me kind of going, oh, looks really good before I show you. But let's have a look, shall we? This one does feel a bit cold, I think. Or maybe it's just me, basically. Um, it's looking very, very wrinkly. So this is the Philodendron rubrocinctum platinum. And I'll bring it in so you can see. It's a bit foldy and it's a bit bruised and battered and it's kind of very similar vibes to the Dean McDowell, but more of those ruffles. I want to say that this is um, a crawler, but it might not be. It, might, it looks like it might be a climber. I will show you something else though, which is quite interesting. Um, I don't know if you can see that webbing that is happening there. I'm hoping that's a bug and not mold. I will be cleaning this, however, but yes, there is some cosmetic damage along these leaves, but I mean, you can only expect so much with these leaves being as large and kind of paddly as they are. And they're, they're kind of the same thickness as the kind of Gloriosa or the Dean McDowell. It's that kind of thickness there. It's decent. It is a top cutting because I can see the, the noodle growth point that's happening on there and I can actually see roots on this and the roots are nice and chunky. And this is another reason why it kind of leads me to believe there is some root death in here from what I can see, possibly some dryness. Uh, but there is also some good roots in here as well. But they are slightly on the chunkier side. And usually with most philodendrons, if they're crawlers, I found that their roots tend to be the thinnest, some of the thinnest ones for philodendrons. So this one I might put into an Aroid soil mix. And I will be trying the Soil Ninja philodendron mix for this one just because I want to see how it grows. Because if it is a crawler, I found that every crawler that I've put into a semi-hydro mix, I've had to take it out and put it into soil. And as soon as I put it into a soil mix, it tends to do a lot better, basically. But let's see some extra information that I found on this specific plant. And ironically enough, I think the platinum side of it, you won't be able to see on this one, no. This is meant to have kind of slightly silvery sheens to it, basically, if I'm not mistaken. So yes, this is a variegated cultivar with silvery green leaves. Apparently my research did find that this is climbing rather than a crawling one. So I think that might be right, potentially, having seen the plot now. And obviously this is a cultivar, so this is something that has been created from the original rubrocinctum. And it is native to Ecuador as well, so native to where Equigenera is from. Interestingly with this one, based on what I'm seeing now, it probably doesn't need a huge level of humidity, unlike the Cuticuens, and it will probably grow very similar to, I would imagine, the Dean McDowell. So yeah, very, very, very cool. I'm quite impressed with that, even though it might look a bit bruised and battered right now. I think this is the, the one that's the most mangled out of all of them, but it's okay. It will grow new leaves and it came to the right person because I really don't mind a bit of cosmetic damage on plants that I'm importing. But so far actually we've not had an awful lot of cosmetic damage. Right, we are halfway through. Let's go for another Anthurium, shall we? Yeah. Philodendron, and now we'll go for Anthurium. This is interesting because they've got like a little baggie at the top. So this is kind of medium sized, I would imagine, um, the plant itself at the stage that they sent me. We will see from my research whether or not this is, oh, this is cool, I remember this one now. This is really, really, really cool. This might not speak to everybody, but it definitely spoke to me when I saw it online. Um, hopefully this is transported well, because this type of anthurium generally doesn't like to be shipped. 
far. Only the bottom leaf looking a bit worse for wear. So let me bring it up, let me take the label off and then we can do that. Ah, how's this for an anthurium? So trilobal, it's got the corrugation that you get from the Luxurians. I also get strong Monstera Spa Peru vibes from this. There is that lowest and oldest leaf there, which is a bit yellowy. But other than that, this is looking good. I can see some roots and I can see some healthy roots. As always, the sphagnum moss is not damp in the slightest. But this I am very happy with. And I'm also happy that of the size. Like I know this can probably get a bit bigger. And it's interesting because it kind of has a growing vine that goes up that way, basically. There's some caterpillars on there. I'm going to just remove that because that will just be a pest magnet in this space. Um, so it's dried, it's not caterpillar, it's dried like leaf sheath, basically. Very, very, very cool. And I think it kind of grows, so it would grow like this and it would grow up against something and everything would be that way rather than it kind of spreads out. Or maybe that's how they were growing it. This is very cool. The leaves are corrugated, but they're not quite as turgid as the Luxurians. And I'm hoping that might mean that this might grow a bit faster than the Luxurians. But this, <laughs> I should have told you the name. <laughs> this is the Anthurium Arisamoides. So, so Arisamoides. Arisamoides, yeah. So same thing with the Peperomioides. It kind of links into kind of ancient Greek. So omnia means similar to. So peperomioides is, I think that was a pilea peperomioides basically, is because it looks very similar. So it's a similar in appearance to a peperomia. That's why it got named the way that it did, even though it isn't a peperomia. So pilea peperomioides, so peperomia, and oides, idia. So this is Arisimoides. And I think from my research, from what I could see from my research actually, let me pick up the trusty iPad. It is because it is similar to a certain type of plant that I'd never heard of before. So Arisimoides is known because, and it was named the way that it was, they think because it resembles a plant Genus, which is Arisimae, Arisima, Arisima. I will put it at the top. <laughs> All the Latin when you get the E's and the A's together, and I've never done Latin in my life, so I don't know how to pronounce it. I am sure I've got so many clever clogs that watch my channel, especially when it comes to some languages. I'm sure somebody will give me a heads up as to how I'm supposed to pronounce it, and I thank you in advance. <laughs> That's why this name is the way that it is. Obviously, it's very similar. And I did do a quick Google of the genus, and yes. And I think there is some, from what I was seeing, they're, they're more well known for their blooms rather than their leaves. But the leaves, I think, are quite similar to this. Terrestrial plant, so that's interesting. This kind of would need, so if it's a terrestrial anthurium, it probably doesn't need that much aeration. Might be wrong. No, I think that might be wrong as well because the same bit of research for that one was saying it's got hot shaped leaves and I'm just like, no, it doesn't. So I'm I'm just going to assume that it's like most other anthuriums and this will be going into the Soil Ninja course semi-hydromix. Native to Ecuador as well and it's in the understory of just regular tra tropical rainforests rather than kind of cloud forests basically. But yeah, this is very, very, very cool. And one that probably not that many people would have seen before you know me on this channel, I tend to go for the weird stuff that not everybody else would necessarily have because, I don't know, spice of life. It makes things a bit more interesting, in my opinion, I think. But yeah, let's move on. Right, one more anthurium and then the two unicorns. Mm, I left the best for last. It might also not be the best. <laughs> Depending. One of the two I'm hoping would have shipped well, the other one remains to be seen. But uh, yeah, let's have a look at this Anthurium. And I think this is one that other people might have. I think I've seen this name being bounced around a bit. 
Um, I don't think this is a particularly obscure one. Oh, it's cool. I think this is one that's crossed a lot of the times with the Queen Anne theorem. And also, let me show you this is from the original order. That's the newest leaf of the Queen Anne theorem. That's the previous one. It is still hardening off, so I'm trying not to touch it too much. It might grow even more. I take everything that I said back about the Queen Anne theorem, and I've said this on previous videos, I am thoroughly enjoying this. Oh, and it's a smaller size Anne theorem, so it's fine. This one doesn't set my world on fire, but I didn't think it would, to be fair. This... Ooh, is that a bug? Is that a bug? Oh! Interesting. I think that was the remnants of mealybugs. Welcome to the jungle, Jumbo! Because... Hmm. <laughs> They can play with my mealybugs, it's fine. <laughs> this is a smallish version of the plant as well. I mean, it's interesting. You can see that this is not setting my world on fire. Anthurium watermaliens. And as I said, I think this is one that's usually maybe pollinated with the um, Queen Anthurium to do hybrids, I think. Um, let's have a look at some of the roots. The roots are good. This is a very small plant. The roots are very good on this, which is impressive because out of all the anthuriums now, this is the floppiest one. Um, and the leaves are quite thin for an anthurium. They're still thicker than the, the one that looked like the Gloriosum, but nowhere near as thick as the one that we were just looking at now with the slightly more corrugated leaves. This is okay. Not setting my world on fire, but it might be one that I'm going to use to cross pollinate because I think I've seen a lot of anthuriums that are cross pollinated with this, which I'm assuming means that this takes quite well to cross pollination. I need to stop smacking it. Uh, but yeah, so far so good, and <laughs> it's great. It's small. It's not going to take up an awful lot of space. I mean, it will do height wise, but pot wise, it won't, which is great. Uh, yes, the tiniest of oldest leaves, the really, really juvenile ones, are not doing that well, but I think these have served their purpose. These are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten leaves. If I lose two leaves, it's fine, basically. But let's see what I found on this one. So apparently, the watermaliens is one that is found in rainforest in French Guyana and Suriname. So that's quite cool. And they grow on the forest floor or on rocky surfaces. So this is gonna love the semi-hydro mix. Gonna love a few rocks on this one. And it does say that it's either terrestrial or lithophytic. So lithophytic, for those that don't know, is plants that grow in, on, or around rocks, basically. So this should be quite interesting. And to be fair, for how much plant there is on top of this, I know it's not particularly big, but it's not an awful lot of roots. So that must mean it's quite good at absorbing some of that moisture. So yeah, this is very, very, very cool. Did it set my world on fire? No. But did I expect it to? Also no. It's okay. And it will be loved and find a place in my space. And it might be one of these plants that surprises me and I really end up falling in love with it. The same thing that, no, I'm thinking the heterocraspidum. I think the moment that I saw it, I was just like, oh, so much better than the pictures. This, for me, the pictures looked good. The pictures didn't set my world on fire either, but this in real life is even more underwhelming. For me, for me, for me, for me. I know that there's probably diehard fans out there of this plant. And if there are, and you're watching this and I've offended you, I am, Terribly sorry, but my personal opinion for this plant, at least the one that I've got in front of me, it's okay. It's okay. Right, philodendron, two philodendrons. The hybrid or the species? Shall we go with the species first and then look at the hybrid? Because the hybrid is substantially larger packaging, so I'm assuming the, the hybrid is a bit bigger. 
So these were the two really expensive plants and I will be adding the prices I've done with all the other plants, hopefully. So you can see what I mean by expensive. It's a lot cheaper than what it used to be even a year ago. And it's because more people are kind of propagating it. This is a seedling as well, I hasten to say. And it should tell you something that this is its packaging and this is how small it is. So I'm not expecting a huge plant for this one. I never did, even for that price. And I do see these, I think this is competitive here in the UK. There's some of these that have come out on the market here as well recently. So they're about the same price, I think. But I wanted to see whether or not the Equigenera version of them would be slightly more substantial. I don't think it is looking at it basically, but we shall see. Uh, any guesses? Whilst I'm, un whilst I'm unboxing, do you want to pop them down below as I open this packaging? Oh, corrugated, oh, and oh. oh. This is the one that I know might be struggling a bit. Uh, some form of filler? It's not wool, I don't think. I think it is plastic, so less than ideal in terms of packaging that's renewable. However, the, the lower leaves look bad. The, the older leaves, the newer leaves are okay. So, guesses? Right. This, <laughs> I cannot believe I am saying this, is a seedling. Doesn't look like much right now. I'll bring it there so you can see. This is a seedling of the Spiritus Sancti. Ah, ah, this is where like angel trumpets play basically. Doing quite well. I'm kind of looking at the roots and I knew this was a risk because philodendrons from Echo Genera at the best of times are a bit challenging. I think the roots are okay in this from what I can see. This will be going into, and this is show you how much faith I've got in the Soil Ninja soil mixes. This is going to be going in the Soil Ninja soil mix. I am not attempting this just yet in anything like semi-hydro. I would like this to size up as much as possible. And I don't know, for the people that are new around here, you do realize that the reason why I put a lot of my plants in semi-hydro mixes is because I want to slow them down. I don't want them to grow too quickly. I know it sounds counterintuitive. Everything that I generally tend to grow in soil goes bananas. So, which is good. I'm, it's not a humble brag. I'm just aware that's usually what happens in my collection at least. But yeah, this doesn't look anything like what it will look like as a mature form. I could add an image, but I think if you're watching this video, you probably know what a Spiritus Sancti looks like. If not, I do encourage you to Google Philodendron Spiritus Sancti and you'll understand. But yeah, let me bring it in a bit closer so you might be able to see what I meant about those lower leaves and you can see there what some of these newer leaves are and you can see the little growth points right at the top there it's interesting because actually maybe it's just the older leaves yeah the the very very young leaves are slightly succulent actually it's something that i wasn't expecting um but the the slightly newer leaves that i mean they're floppy at the moment they might go harder mm, maybe Maybe, but yeah, it's a bit more succulent than I thought it was going to be. This is going to have a really interesting shape. It is still a baba, but I'm okay with that, especially considering how much I paid for this. Um, then you will see the price, and you might think that I'm insane, that's fine. And I could have waited for a few, probably, and I know, I could have waited maybe another six months, 12 months, and this price is probably going to come down even more. I don't know, based on what I'm seeing from the few people that have this, I know that it's not the fastest growing plant or the fastest plant to start looking like it's mature form. So maybe the price won't drop as much or we'll just see a lot more seedlings coming out. But I'm happy with this. I am very, very happy with this. Might not look like it, but I'm trying to keep the crazy down to like a minimum level with this one. This is very, very cool. And again, cannot believe I am holding my own Spirit of Sancti. So yeah, small, I get it. It's not as impressive as if I'd managed to buy something big, but I'm happy with this. This is very cool. So let me 
tell you some of the information that I found about the Spiritus Sancti. So most people have probably done their own research on the Spiritus Sancti, but obviously we all know that it's rare in the sense that it's difficult to come by. I will interject here to say that I've spoken to a couple of my followers in South America to find out from them that it's really not that rare over there. They're just not necessarily allowed to ship it out quite as much, basically. So there's some drama there that I don't really want to get involved in. But it is endemic to Espirito Santo. That's all. That's a one thing together, basically. So Espirito Santo in Brazil where it grows apparently in the understory of humid forest and climbs on trees and rocks. So that's quite an interesting one as well. So this is going to be one that I'm looking forward to growing. I'm also, this is, this is the one plant that I point blank refuse to spend the money that this were going for, the more mature forms than this, but not, not a full mature form either even three or four years ago, purely because A, I don't have that kind of money to spend. B, I wouldn't sleep worrying about a plant that I had spent that much money on. This is still an expensive plant. It's probably one of the priciest plants I own, including the other one that's coming up now. But I, I, I can sleep with the price of this if, if it all goes wrong, basically. I, I'm, I'm okay, fine. But yes my very own floppy at the moment. Hopefully it will perk up. Spiritus Sancti. All right, last one. And actually, ironic enough, this is the one that I'm more excited about than even the other one. And this is one that I hadn't even ordered. I added it onto the order afterwards. I don't know if they do this with everybody. I think they probably would do. They don't know who I am because I'm very good about not being like, this is who I am. Give me your better plants, because I know that's come up. So I try as much as I can to not make it super obvious who I am when I'm ordering this. Not that I think I'm anybody special, but they might recognize me from here, basically. But this is one of my followers, and I cannot remember who it was that reached out and told me this, whoever it was. Thank you. <laughs> I spent a whole chunk of extra money that I wasn't expecting to because of you, but in a good way. So thanks for letting me know. Um, this is, as I said, this is one that I didn't put on the original order and they reached out to me both, actually all three times, to say, look, do you want to add anything you paid for your order? If you want to add anything else to that order, let us know and we can tell you what the price is going to be and you can pay for that extra separately and we'll add that to your order, especially if there's like a good few weeks before we ship it out to people. So, without further ado, let me just unclip this. And this is considerably larger. This one I was also expecting in seedling form. Oh, God knows where I'm going to put this one now. Mm. Oh, because this one has the potential of being big. Um, but I might be wrong. I might see that it's mainly packaging and it might be. But I would have imagined this is more seedling form than full plant. But... I'm not going to pull this out because this was almost as expensive as the other one was. Oh no, this has also got an awful lot of packaging in it. Um, so this one's got paper and that cotton woolly stuff in it as well. So let's see. Oh, oh no, but it is sizable, this one, in, in relation to the other one. So do, 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 do. let me get everything off so you might be able to see it. I don't want to lose the label because I am most definitely going to keep the label. The roots are looking good. This, there is one leaf that has got, the oldest leaf has got some bleaching and things like that. Does this remind you of anything? This, and this is where I was, me and I'm going, do I get this? Do I really desperately need to con to like complete the set that much? Yes, because reasons. Is the hybrid this? They call this the Philodendron Esmeralda Spirit. This is a hybrid between the Philodendron Spiritus Sancti and the Esmeraldens. <laughs> <It's> super cool. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, yes, I can now say that I've got, hopefully, most of the permutations of the Esmeral Dents that I would want to have, basically. So the leaves are considerably larger on this. I'll be very curious to see what this is going to look like. And the reason why I ended up getting it is because I'm just like, you know what? They've hybridized it. Am I going to find this somewhere else? Possibly in the future. Am I ever going to be able to hybridize? I've never, hi I've never pollinated a philodendron, let alone hybridized a philodendron. So I thought, yeah, let's, let's, and I'm so glad I did. I would like to put this with the other Esmeraldensi things back here, but I don't know if there's any space. We shall see. But yeah, roots are looking super, super good on this. And there's a decent aerial root that's there. So this is a bit more established. Obviously the root mass isn't particularly large on this one, but it is relatively established. Let me tell you what I found on this one. Obviously this is a cultivar, it's a hybrid. And I would imagine what I found for this is, yeah, so it's a hybrid. Its plant parents originate from the tropical regions of Central and South America, yes, because of the Esmeralda Dens and because of the Spiritus Sancti. But yeah, I think that was that was it. There wasn't much about this as a hybrid because there's not that many people that probably have this hybrid. Very cool. The leaves, feeling them, they feel more like the Esmeralda Dens than they do the Spiritus Sancti. They're not as succulent, but as I said, those earlier leaves on the Spiritus Sancti might be the kind of more juvenile leaves and it might still get these slightly thinner leaves. Um, I'd be curious to see what's going to happen to the ruffles because the ruffles are there. This feels very similar to the Esmeralda Dense, very, very similar to the Esmeralda Dense, but it's still different. So the internodal spacing is quite close, all of these things. So very cool. This one might go into semi-hydro. Oh, it's a lot of money to go into semi-hydro. But, um, yeah, I might see, I might, I might still put this in soil because this is one that I do potentially want to see if it can go large sooner. And obviously we're starting with a much larger plant on this one, but I do want to, and that was the other reason I wanted to get this, considering how quickly my Esmeraldans can grow and considering what I know about the Spiritus Sancti and how slowly that can grow, that's why I thought, let's try with the hybrid and hope that it's as fast as the Esmeralda Dense parents, not the Spiritus Sancti. But I think that is everything. This is quite a long video looking at it now, but hopefully you've all enjoyed. And I really did. This was a fun unboxing. I would say to myself, if I'm going to be ordering more plants from Equigenera, I might still end up getting another one this year. I don't know. <laughs> Watch this space. I don't think I've got any space really. Although if I do have space, some of the stuff might need to go from my collection. So I don't know, have I got, can everybody give me a shout out from the UK down in the comments below? Have I got many people from the UK that watch my channel? I kind of, based on the stats that I'm seeing from the YouTubes, I do have some people that watch me from the UK, but a lot of people from the US, Germany, Canada, the Philippines. Um, so yeah, it's, do let me know because if there is a few people that watch me from the UK, if I do get rid of some of my plants, I might be able to send some to some of my followers if you're interested, basically. So yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to go through in this video. It's an unboxing. It is what it is. I will be doing an update. I will hopefully have added in the videos from all the different routes and close-ups and all these things that I usually do in these and give you the prices as well at the top. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. I sure as hell did. Uh, and I hope you have a great rest of your day and hopefully I shall see you here soon. Thanks. Bye.